president spoke to this personally. He spoke to this personally. He, again, he believes that uh, classified documents and information should be taken seriously. He takes them seriously. <laughs> com slash stew is the place to go to subscribe to Blaze TV. Use the promo code stew. Save yourself 10 bucks. If you're watching on YouTube, like the video right this second. Subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell. Do all the things. Rob Eno is going to be here in a little bit to tell us why the media sucks. Biden's classified document BS has become serious enough, apparently, for a special counsel appointment. What an adventure. But we start by doing the permanent COVID emergency. Yes, it's always an emergency. It will always be an emergency. We're having a lot of big headlines as it relates to COVID and kind of the aftermath of COVID. Former ESPN employees are suing uh, the company over their COVID-19 vaccine requirement. They were both fired uh, in 2021 after they refused to get a vaccine. That's uh, going to be a big legal matter. Pentagon has dropped their COVID vaccination mandate they obviously should because those 23 year old military members were always really at risk. That was always the big risk of COVID. And the U.S., of course, extending the public health emergency status for COVID. How do these things go along? How do we have ESPN that had a vaccine mandate back in the day that fired employees and has that has been going on for so long that the employees are now suing over that firing? We have the military where. I mean, arguably, if there's any place you could actually put a vaccine mandate on, it would be the military. That's something that you know, they have tons of vaccine mandates in the military already outside of COVID. At least legally, maybe you had a pathway there. We're removing that because uh, the COVID thing is so far gone. And yet we're extending the COVID emergency. Why on earth is that happening? I will say, you know, people would be a lot less resistant to some of these measures if you weren't forcing it on them all the time. If you just said, hey, here's what we think, do what you want to do, but here's what we think the best step forward is, people wouldn't be all that crazy. I mean, you, re you remember going back to the beginning, you're in March 2020. Crazy times, right? Things going crazy. You know, games are getting canceled and events are getting canceled and everything seems to be shutting down. And Donald Trump goes on TV and he says, hey, two weeks to, to slow the spread. Look, people were people happy about that? No. Generally speaking, people were like, all right, well, a couple of weeks. Let's see where this goes. Uh, OK, I don't, I'm not comfortable with it, but we'll give you a couple of weeks. It was when it went on and on and on and on that people got upset. And the reason why, of course, a lot of this stuff happens is not because of actual medical advice. It's because of control and fear. That's how this works. Now, of course, you might say, wait a minute. What do you mean they extended the COVID emergency? Isn't the COVID thing kind of over? Aren't we past the pandemic stage? Uh, that's what I thought. And I got that from a very well-respected doctor. Is the pandemic over? The pandemic is over. We still have a problem with COVID. We're still doing a lot of work on it. Uh, it's, but the pandemic is over. If you notice, no one's wearing masks. Everybody seems to be in pretty good shape. And so I think it's changing, and I think this is a perfect example of it. Doctor, not Dr. Jill, but Dr. Joe Biden there, letting us know that the pandemic is over and you don't have to wear masks anymore, apparently. Uh, now, look, they keep trying to reverse this stuff, but like if, if their entire uh, uh, piece of this puzzle was to say, hey, we think you should get a vaccine. Hey, we think you should try this treatment. Hey, I think you should try uh, wearing a mask people would be able to live with it, right? Like the government recommends stuff all the time. I mean, they, you know, they recommend an entire way for you to eat. You know, the food pyramid existed forever. I think they were, didn't they just replace it with something else? I don't even know. The fact that I don't know tells you something, right? Here's a government uh, program that comes up and they say, eat you know, 12 servings of grain a day or whatever the hell they say. I don't remember. I, 
Obviously, you look at me. I didn't pay attention to the food pyramid. Um, now, look, there are you want to go to like reason.com. You will see things picking apart the food pyramid as a recommendation. And there has been it has not worked out particularly well. If you look around any mall or beach in this country, you can determine that for yourself. But like there's not a lot of people with outward anger at the food pyramid. The government's telling you what to eat. They're telling you how many things, how many servings of fruits and vegetables and meats and cheeses and everything that you should eat. Shouldn't we all be upset? Shouldn't we all be protesting in the streets? No, we're not because we just let it go one in one ear and out the other, right? We look at it and we say, okay, I'll take that as maybe a, a general baseline of what people, maybe officials say are healthy in the food pyramid case that's a little weak, but still... You take that as maybe part of your decision-making process. Okay, okay, thanks for the recommendation. We appreciate it. Now I'm going to go, uh, go to Papa John's, right? Like that, that's what Americans do. Uh, they don't get upset about it because the government isn't requiring it for them. They're not forcing them into some lifestyle or ha- making them put stuff into their body that they don't want. And that's why people get upset. Of course, there's a reason why the COVID emergency is at this point seemingly permanent. It's not because of the you know several hundred people a day who are credited for passing away from COVID. Look, that's still a problem. There are people who are still affected by it. Uh, there's all sorts of things surrounding this that are unpleasant, but we don't react to every unpleasant virus or disease the way we did with COVID. The situation here is that they want to keep the money flowing. They have decided that this is a uh, an emergency and to justify policies and large expenditures they have to keep the, the, the guise of an emergency going. You know, when they want to go out and buy these, whether it's medical equipment, whether it's vaccines, whether it's treatments, whether it's masks, all this stuff, they're all justifying that spending under emergency procedures. And once these emergency procedures get in, I got news for you, the government doesn't like giving them up. My favorite example of this is Johnstown, Pennsylvania. Johnstown, Pennsylvania had some issues with uh, some, a flood, a couple floods, actually. This is what it looked like back in the day, like 1936. You know, a lot of water in places it's not supposed to be. And that is an issue that government must be involved in. And OK, they stepped in and they wanted to help. And how would they help? Well, they decided to launch a new emergency tax. Yes, the tax dates back to the St. Patrick's Day flood of 1936, which devastated pro- uh, portions of Johnstown and Pittsburgh. It had only been 47 years since the flood of 1889, which resulted in more than 2,200 deaths in the Johnstown area. Just a quick side note here. Uh, Aren't we told that uh, deaths from uh, natural disasters are increasing because of global warming? I mean, not a lot of floods caused 2,200 deaths, at least that that I know of recently. Um, In the flood's immediate aftermath, and only three years after the repeal of Prohibition, the state's legislator passed a 10% tax on liquor. Uh, you know, to raise money for flood relief, totally understandable. Uh, until, of course, in 1951 when it was made permanent. And then it was increased from 10% to 15% in 1963. And then from 15% to 18% in 1968. This is according to uh, the museum website. Although only 1% of the general fund, the tax potential for generating revenue continues to grow. In 2006, it raised $223 million. In 2017, it raised $361 million. The proceeds are not earmarked for any particular purpose causing some tax opponents to call for its repeal. So you have these two floods. You have an area that's very vulnerable. They pass a tax, a temporary tax, just to help this community. They help the community, and then they leave the tax in, and they leave it in, and then they make it permanent, and then they raise it, and then they raise it again. And now it's hundreds of millions of dollars a year that are supposed to be going to help a city that flooded almost 100 years ago. That is what happens with government power. And it goes on to say the repeal efforts have fallen flat. So the 18 percent tax on liquor continues to generate more than 300 million dollars for the state's general fund. Here's the thing. If we had a sane government, a government that actually cared, a government that actually tried to do the right thing, we could trust them with powers like this. We could say, you know what, when there's an emergency, we need you to act quickly. Maybe you don't have time to put something through the legislature. Okay, then let's give you these emergency powers. They're, in some ways, it's a, it's a coherent thought process, unless you actually watch what the government does with these powers. 
They continually take emergency powers, turn them into permanent piggy banks. That's how this works. And COVID is in the middle right now of turning into a nonstop cash generating piggy bank that will never, ever, ever go away. When the last variant uh, hits the last person in the last U.S. state, Hundreds of millions, if not billions of dollars will continue to flow from that point forward and, and on forever and ever and ever and ever. We have to step up and stop this. This is not even just Republican or Democrats. It's also Republicans. They do the same thing. We often see it when it comes to military issues uh, with Republicans who just use it as a constant piggy bank to be able to fund their friends, their their donors, their business contacts, the company they want to work for when they get out of office. All these things are constantly happening. And overall, it's one thing for government to vote in a bill that is a bad bill. Uh, it does happen from time to time. Sure. But at least we can hold people responsible for that. Often this stuff is jammed through through some existing statute that can be expanded at will, that gets jammed into another bill that we actually have to do. And this money keeps flowing and flowing and flowing and flowing and flowing. I think we were fortunate in this country to avoid some of the worst consequences of the COVID hysteria, the worst, the worst instincts of it, right? You know, like, yes, we could talk about the military. Uh, a couple of ES people at ESPN were fired for this. We had uh, some first responders who were fired for this. All that was, was wrong, but it didn't necessarily hit every aspect of society. It wasn't, uh, we, we, we're not under lockdown anymore in most places. Even mask mandates have almost entirely gone away. Most of even uh, the vaccine mandates have gone away. That's all really positive, And I think is a function of the American people just saying, nah, no thanks. We don't want this anymore. Bye bye. And it made it was so clear to the politicians eventually they had to move. But this sort of stuff is stuff that people don't look at. Th this sort of crazy spending, unending budgets, never, you know, the infinity budget, if you will, that's going to be applied to COVID and has already been applied to COVID, is never going to stop unless we actually get people in office who stand up and do something about it. We saw the Freedom Caucus do some really good things and change the way our government is going to work here for the next couple of years. And this is the type of thing that we should keep following up on. If you want to pass a bunch of money, a bunch of spending for COVID, Okay, go in front of people, make your case, let people analyze that, and then be held accountable for a vote. You can't just jam this stuff in to some side bill, some military spending bill, because you know everyone's going to support the military spending. This has to end. And we have to, we, I would love to be in a country where we could trust our politicians to use emergency powers in the way they were intended in a true emergency for a very short period of time. But we clearly cannot trust them. Our founders knew the real secret of this. You can never trust them. You can't allow the structure to be built on trust. It's one of the things I like about cryptocurrency, trustless system. You don't have to trust anyone. You can send money from one place to another without any trust at all. The same thing applies here. You have to take trust out of it. You cannot give them these powers because when they have these powers, they will abuse them. They will continue to abuse them and those that abuse will never, ever, ever go away. So as much as we'd love to be able to trust people in Washington to handle emergency powers, those emergency powers need to die. We need to come back to a place where people actually vote on things, that they actually argue about them, that we debate them in public, and we make rational, sober decisions that actually benefit people rather than screw them for an entire century in the case of Pennsylvania. Back in a second. Ah, yes, it's time for the GenuCell New Year's clearance event. For a limited time, save over 70% off GenuCell's most popular package and take skincare uh, to the next level. I mean, we're talking GenuCell. This is the best in skincare. My wife loves this. My mom loves this. Uh, we give it for gifts often because, you know, when you're not, you're not really sure, everyone can use a better skincare product. We don't want to look older if we can help it. And you know what? You can look five, maybe 10, maybe 15 years younger with GenuCell products. And I understand the skepticism when I say something like that. 
But you're talking about, you know, what is, what is aging? Why do you look older? Fine lines, forehead wrinkles, sagging jawline, dark marks, skin redness, uh, under eye bags and puffiness. How do you get rid of those things? Well, GenuCell says, well, you can do that with us and we're going to guarantee it. So no risk at all. Why not try it? GenuCell works for women and men, safe for all skin types. It's perfect for skin really of any age. And with its immediate effects, GenuCell promises results that will make you smile, guaranteed, or 100% of your money back. Right now, you can get GenuCell's customer favorite deep firming serum. Uh, this is their vitamin C serum, absolutely free in every most popular package. Hydrate your skin while restoring the vibrant glow that you expect from GenuCell. Go to GenuCell.com slash stew, GenuCell.com slash stew. Stew. Enter the code STEW at checkout. Every order is uh, placed right now is automatically upgraded to free shipping for the new year. So don't miss it. GenuCell.com slash stew. It's G-E-N-U-C-E-L dot com slash stew. I'm joined once again by Rob Eno, Blaze TV's media critic and uh, resident all-around wonderful human being. Rob, thanks for coming on the program. Hey, thanks for having me on again. Um, let me start with this document uh, situation with Biden. And Trump. And let me pitch to you first my general take on it and tell me what your temperature is on it, because I think it's a little out of the mainstream on this one. I don't care if Trump or Biden had documents at their house. I just don't care about it. I Maybe I should care about it. But generally speaking, the, the reason why you why classified documents being somewhere are important is that you have the knowledge that is on them, right? You look at a document, you know what's on the document, and that's why they're classified. These guys are b have both been president of the United States. They've all seen these documents already. They already knew what was on them. The fact that they took them to their house can have some potential problems. If someone breaks into their home, if, if someone gets a hold of something that could be sensitive. But like a letter from Kim Jong-un, other than just hey, we want to have it in the museum for later archives. I just don't see why it's that big of a deal. I, I think it depends on what it is, right? I mean, they, they, I mean, we seem to think that the Trump ones were from Trump's little package of stuff that happened in 2016. Mm -hmm. So we had ammunition against the FBI for yeah. when they spied on them, some right? So that, that, yeah. that's some mm -hmm. of that they think is that. The Biden stuff's really weird now mm -hmm. because uh, the author of the one of the Hunter laptop books tweeted out a picture today or yesterday of a, uh, probably today because it happened today, of a document where Hunter Biden claimed that he owned the house that the documents were found in. Mm. Now, if the documents are found in Hunter's house, when Hunter's been known to sell stuff and maybe give 10% to the big guy, right. <laughs> like my, my first thing was, was the box labeled Hunter's sale items or right. Hunter's <laughs> fire sale items or something like that. Like yeah. that's the problem. Knowing everything we know about the Biden family and their, their predilection to use the office of the presidency and vice presidency to enrich themselves, that's what I'm concerned about. But the main thing is just the mm -hmm. media reaction to both is just hilarious. Yeah, and just to go a little further on this, because I think you're right. That's when it becomes interesting. If we have evidence that they use this for some illicit purpose, if they leaked it to an ally, you know, the, the insinuation with Trump initially from the left was like, this is why he got these Saudi golf tournaments at his resorts. He's been selling the Saudis these secrets. It's like, what are you talking? If you have any evidence of that, fine, I'll start to care. But the fact that he, you know, Donald Trump threw a bunch of boxes in a closet, or even Joe Biden has some documents in a in, next to his Corvette, his garage, in Hunter's garage, maybe. in Hunter's yeah. garage, maybe. <laughs> you know, I, I just. It, there's two parts of this, right? Like, is there an actual consequence of it? And I think the answer to both of these situations is probably no, right? right? Secondarily, will it change people's mind on these politicians? Will this be the type of thing where you'll say, well, you know, Joe Biden is so uh, so careless with these documents, we're changing our vote. Or Donald Trump is so careless no. with these documents, no one is changing their vote over this. I feel like... It was just one of these things where the media had this opportunity to say Donald Trump was really bad, and the American people didn't really know how bad that was. After we look at it, we're like, well, kind of Obama did it, and now Biden has done it and multiple times in multiple locations. There's just not a, ho a whole heck of a lot of impact from that part of it. Right, and like you said, you know, Donald Trump already knew what was in the documents because he had read them. <laughs> and if he yeah. wanted to give the Saudis the information so that he'd get the live golf tour to his tournaments. He could just say it. So the back off guys could make fun of him. You know that? Yeah. 
Right. He could just say he could take a photo of it when he's walking out. The, like, yeah. n- why would it matter? Like, I understand the Smithsonian might want to have copies of this stuff so we can look at history later on. Great. Get, get a copy of it. Maybe you take the original, give him a copy of it. Yeah. He wants to keep his little Kim Jong-un letter. Whatever. I don't know. I just think the whole thing has been overblown. But it has provided wonderful, wonderful opportunity to watch the media flail because they just told us that no sane person would ever have documents at their house. Only a person who is trying to work with the Russians and sink our country. This person should go to prison immediately. And now they have to totally reverse themselves and try to figure out a way that these cases are different. Yeah, and, and you're starting to see them go at Karine Jean-Pierre in meetings or in the, the press briefings now because there's one thing the, me- the media doesn't mind being used to protect Democrats, that's what they're used to doing. Mm-hmm. They hate to be shown to be hypocrites mm-hmm. while they're doing it. And I think that's where you're seeing some of the attacks and the, the, the less than pleasant conversations that Kareem John Pierre has been having with people not named Peter Ducey. Yeah, because it, it, it is interesting. Uh, this, at least the first batch was discovered before the election. So they could have. It, it, yeah, exactly. This should have been. And that, that's what the CBS guy was like. Wait, 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 what? You had these on November 2nd before the election and you didn't tell the people? Did you do this on purpose? Yeah. The FBI didn't tell the people that they had it? You know, it's just... And, and they the allowed... stuff the, was December. Yeah. The stuff in the house was December. Yeah, and they, they, they allowed the media to go down this road and double down and triple down and quadruple down about how yeah. Donald Trump should be sent to Guantanamo over this. And all the time knowing that... In a few weeks, they were going to have to admit that they had the exact same problem. I mean, I, I, I'm always amazed that the media can't find the anger that is necessary when someone does this to you. You know, yeah. like when, when someone lets you go out and defend them, when you know the exact opposite thing is true, they are, use, they are using your credibility, your, your career, your livelihood to benefit them. And then for some reason, the media never gets annoyed at this when it's a, when it's a Democrat. I think they get a little annoyed, but it goes away. Yeah. I mean, look at the poor guy that's the Politico legal analyst yesterday. He said, here are the reasons that, yeah. the, that it's different between Trump and Biden. Trump's were found at Trump's home. Like, that was, that like, was number one. Yeah. And, <laughs> and the next day. Next day. Biden is out there admitting, it. oh, yeah, they're at my home. Yeah. But again, but it was like, locked. where, it was locked. where it is there, them. like, yeah. tight, you know, uh, contact inside the White House that like, leaks them all these stories all the time to say, guys, don't say that because uh, there might be more to this story. Like, they just don't care. They don't care about the media. And the media no. sits there and just takes it, just yep. takes it over and over again. And they occasionally only get mad when they're embarrassed, right? Exactly, which is what's been happening this week. Which has been happening this week. Um, I think, though, it highlights a really fundamental part of media coverage, and uh, nobody expressed this better than the dumbest person on television, Joy Behar. Uh, Now, she's on The View, of course, and, you know, she's very stupid. I mean, Joy Behar is just a very stupid person. She's never said anything intelligent in her entire life. But she's also stupid because she doesn't really realize what she's saying is saying the quiet part out loud. Listen to this breakdown as to why it's okay for Biden to have done this and Trump, it's really, really bad. Check this out. Well, we all know that Trump is a liar and a thief. You know? We know that. So it's not that big a jump to say that he obstructed and he lied. We don't think that Biden is a liar and a thief, so we give him the benefit of the doubt. That's partly what's going on. But what I think also Mm -hmm. is going on, no matter what the truth of it is, Whoopi, they will spin it, Bubblehead and Marjorie Taylor and that crowd, Matt Gaetz, you think they're not gonna spin this that is just as bad as Trump? And so the, the lie gets out there, people believe it. I think this is fundamentally the whole issue with the media. They believe inherently that Donald Trump is evil. So when Donald Trump does something, it's evil. They believe Joe Biden is good. So when he does something, it's fine. Like that is, they see this, all this information comes through this prism where they automatically see everything that it's going on by a Republican is bad and everything by a Democrat is good. And it's like when they get into these situations, she's obviously just not smart enough to come up with a, a viable excuse, but she just admitted it. Yeah, you know, we, we already know Donald Trump's bad, so what he did was bad. We know Donald, Donald, Joe Biden's good, so what he did was good. It, I mean, that's not, how you, that's not how you run a civilization. No, and it, it's utterly laughable on its face, yeah. right? It's Donald Trump eats a taco bowl from his office, <laughs> and he's racist on Cinco de Mayo. Right. Joe Biden's son gets a job with the Ukrainian energy <laughs> firm that he's utterly unqualified for after Joe Biden threatens the attorney general of the Ukraine. Right. So 
there's that. Mm -hmm. You know, um, no Joe Biden's there. son gets billions of dollars for a, a partnership that he has with John Kerry's stepson uh, from the Chinese Communist Party apparatus. But Donald Trump, you know, once bought McDonald's for the <laughs> college football <laughs> national champions, and it was bad. Yeah. You know, it's like that's the kind of stuff that's just, it's utterly insane to a normal human being with a rational mind, but they keep doing it and doing it. It's because they think Joe Biden is good and Joe Biden's not Donald Trump, so he must be good. Joe Biden probably has presided over the largest crime syndicate in American political history, for all we know, for the mm -hmm. past 20 years, enriching his family. But, you know, he's just Joe from Scranton. So, know. You know, it, it's good. I mean, J Peter Schweizer said just that. He said that Joe Biden was the most corrupt vice president in American history. That's quite a statement. And he has, of course, book after book after book right. backing it up as to why that's true. Oh, that's not true. He's just a right wing nut job that's, that has no facts to back it up. That, you know, bibliography be damned. Right. I know. Yeah. So what, what do you do about this? Right. Because you can say individual reporters are just out of control. You can uh, you can say that they're liberals. And, and look, they've always been liberals. I, I mean, I can remember going back to a day, I think, where. You know, liberals, yeah, they say they gave you a liberal tilt to the coverage, but it wasn't like this. There wasn't this visceral hatred for someone like, you know, for Donald Trump, for example, where they will just go. I mean, look, they hated George W. Bush. They hated Reagan. Yeah. But they, they, they don't even attempt to do journalism anymore. They're firing the old school reporters who would be like, ah, we can put a let's put an op ed from Tom Cotton in to give the other side. They'll just fire those guys now. I mean, this yeah. is really a new era of journalism. Well, it's triggering if you have a point of view that's something <laughs> other than the official point of view. And it's, and I think that what's really brought this out, and it goes back to talk radio starting with, with Rush Limbaugh going mm -hmm. national. It goes to blogs starting in the late 90s and early 2000s. It goes to an alternative ecosystem being out there, and they are just upset that there's an alternative ecosystem, and they can't protect it. You might think they didn't protect it, and they'd have somebody do an op-ed, but in the reporting, there was only one version of facts, and it was their version of facts, and there wasn't an alternative viewpoint. They get upset. It's why people like Senator Dianne Feinstein wanted journalists to have licenses, yeah. if you remember that. Mm -hmm. That, like, in order to be the real news person, you should have a license from the government to say that what you're saying is the truth. That's, what, that's why they want, you know, competing ideas censored on social media that we're learning from the Twitter files. That's why all of this is happening, because they have lost control of the narrative, and they're getting slapped in the face with it. So what is the, is the answer just to increase that other narrative to make sure that we keep amplifying Absolutely. other voices and not give up? Because I think it's, there's, there's a temptation just to just be like, what are we going to do? And throw your hands up. But you can't do that. No, I, I think that's it. And I, and I actually, those, those 20, and this goes back to the speaker fight last week, right? Those 20 guys and gals that set, stood up and said McCarthy can't be speaker except for these concessions, there are going to be real investigations. Jim Jordan is not going to sweep stuff under the rug. I think he was on with Glenn earlier today. Yeah, he was. He is not going to sweep stuff under the rug. And the media is going to have to report on it because there are going to be real documents that they uncover that show these things. And, and I, I would bet, and if I were him, I would subpoena the Trump documents and I would subpoena the Biden documents and let's see what's in them. Yeah. As let's part see. of that investigation. Do you get to at least drive the Corvette around for the weekend, too? Oh, I hope so. Okay. That's good. I hope so. I mean, I think they do. I thought Glenn that. might have bought one. I know. Just, just so we could do like a reenactment. I like it. Yeah. I like it. I'd take it out. Uh, Rob Eno, <laughs> resident media critic here at Blaze TV. Rob, thanks so much for coming on the program. Thanks for having me on. Is there a critical vulnerability here where the entire country had to be stopped because of something that probably, you know, involved one sector or another? Well, again, part of what you're seeing here is an abundance of caution and making absolutely certain that operations were safe. But this is one of the reasons why uh, we need to get these answers and, and have this review uh, of exactly what happened, uh, because uh, we need to understand whether this reflects a systemic issue uh, and what would uh, be required so that there's no single point of failure here. This is an incredibly complex system. Uh, so uh, uh, glitches or complications uh, happen all the time, but we can't allow them to to uh, ever lead to this level of disruption. The guy's done a pretty good job so far, huh? Everything's working completely fine with our transportation sector. 
Thanks so much, Mayor Pete. He only took a few months off uh, to make sure he was, you know, when he was birthing the child or whatever he was doing, um, you know, a little chest feeding there, whatever, whatever the stuff he was doing uh, during his time off. And people kept saying, like, oh, I can't believe he would do that. And I thought to myself, like, isn't it probably best for all of us that he's not actually doing this job? I mean, it can't possibly get better if he's doing it, can it? I don't remember any problems with our transportation uh, sector at all when he was on vacation. When he was on maternity leave, I don't remember any problems. The problems all seem to be when he's there. We should tell him to have another kid. That's probably the only solution here. Mayor Pete, I mean, what a... What a dolt. What a giant zero this guy is. It really, and, it's, and you know, he comes off as this, like, very well-considered guy, and he, he wants to make sure that you know that he's smart, and you're supposed to take from all of his commentary that he's above you and a little more intellectual than you. So suck on that. But I, I will say, just from a... This is a theory. I'll, let, let me bridge the gap from truth to a theory of mine that I can't prove yet, but I believe is true. So truth, yes, uh, Mayor Pete's uh, kind of a giant zilch. But when it comes to theory here, think about the order of events. Mayor Pete runs for president. Kind of does a little bit better than people would think. He kind of made some noise in that election, bubbled around third, fourth, fifth place in that general vicinity. And you might say, well, that's not so good. And it's not. But it's also Mayor Pete. I mean, the fact that he could get in fifth place is a miracle, right? So he's seen as an up-and-coming competitor to the president. He kind of suddenly drops out of the race uh, during the uh, primary and immediately endorses Joe Biden and then kind of disappears for a little bit. Joe Biden winds up getting into the White House and taps Mayor Pete as the transportation secretary. Now, rewind to the primary. What were they mocking Mayor Pete about? They were mocking Mayor Pete about all sorts of things related to his job as mayor, largely transportation related. They ran an ad famously that they said, they like, wow, look at Mayor Pete's accomplishments. He put decorative lighting underneath a bridge and he re- reinvigorated the sidewalks of South Bend, like mocking him for not being able to accomplish much of anything. It was all talk about, you know, filling potholes and all of this. I swear they were just trolling him by saying, hey, You want to come into the administration as the transportation secretary after we just made fun of you for decorative lighting under bridges? Does that sound like a good idea? And Mayor Pete, you know, this is a double win for the Biden administration or the people around him, most likely. They're taking out of competitor, right? Pete Buttigieg. And they're bringing him closer. Keep your enemies closer. Um, And they put him in a position that is an absolute no-win job. No one, no one excels coming out of the Secretary of Transportation gig. There's no winning there. No one's impressed when you do that job well. There's only downside. Every time there's a big air, airport disaster, you're going to get the blame. When the airports are running fine, you're not going to get anything out of that. Everyone expects them to run fine. So they put him in a position that he's, number one, has no way of winning and, and, and improving his profile. Number two... He's absolutely, completely unqualified for. So you know he's going to do an absolutely terrible job. And then at the end of the day, Mayor Pete says, yeah, sure, I'll take that job. Just a completely naive, pathetic move by by Mayor Pete. And now, I mean, does he have any future at all in politics? He looks, he's embarrassing in the one job that he's actually had that people knew about. Uh, That's where we are. Uh, Joe Biden, by the way, uh, going to be investigated for his document handling. U.S. Attorney General Merrick Garland said he had uh, he announced an appointment of a special counsel to look into the handling of sensitive government documents. This is so embarrassing. And and the fact that I mentioned this with Rob, that he put all these people out when he knew this stuff was coming. He knew the documents were there. He knew this was going to be a controversy. He continued to let these people flail around and defend him as if Donald Trump had made the biggest mistake you know, of, of any president in history. And then on the other side of it, he's got to now admit that, yeah, basically the same thing was going on. Look, we know what the media is going to do. They're trying to find some distinction to say, we swear it's not the same thing, but I have news for you. Pretty much is. I don't really care. And I said this to Rob. I don't really care. I don't really care if you had a few documents. If they need to go back into the, into the archives, fine. If they don't, fine. I don't really care. A couple of documents here, a couple of documents there. I'm not all that worried about it. But it is funny to see them have to eat their words. Um, Arkansas Governor Sarah Huckabee Sanders had an interesting first day in office. She banned the term Latinx or Latinx. Latinx. Or as 
Thank you. As Joe Biden said, Latinx. He's the only person I've ever heard it say, uh, pronounced that way, but let's just call it like Kleenex. It's Latinx. Latinx. Thank you so much, Joe. Um, so you can't use that uh, term anymore, at least on government official uh, documentation. Of course, you can say whatever done, dumb term you want to say. Uh, the, we're in that kind of woke area, right? You're seeing Republican governors try to push back against a lot of this wokeness. Will it work? We will see. But on the other hand, one of the best things you can do to push back against wokeness is just expose it. Let people see what it looks like in practice. Libs of TikTok is probably the best one at doing this. They just find those clips of liberals being liberals, of crazy progressives being crazy progressives, and post them. They're public posts. Here, this is what they think. Let me give you one. This is a mom freaking out a little bit about her trans kid. The school district now is a freaking nightmare. I go to enroll my child and my kiddo is standing right there. I hand them the birth certificate and I say, see right here, this is his sex. He is a boy, he goes by he, him. I had no issues at his past school and I don't expect to have any issues here. And I swear it was like Karen, the transphobic secretary was just waiting on us that day. She said she wouldn't put my child in the school system as his name because it has to match a birth certificate. But again, had no issues at the last school. I told her I absolutely would not enroll my child as a female. And she said, you will and you are. She enrolled my child as a female, then sent mail to my house with my child's dead name on it. At this point, my child is supposed to start school on Monday and is enrolled in the system as a female. Every single teacher in the school knew about my child. And the students were told a little girl was coming to class. This is a visual representation of my mood. I... I don't know what is more disturbing, honestly. This mother and the way she's treating her child, trying to raise her child, or TikTok, just generally speaking TikTok. That is just her like trying to be funny and cutting the, the dumb jump cuts and oh God, it's so stupid. How do we allow this to become a thing? How? Oh, I know, the Chinese government, uh, Communist Party, they, they decided to make it a thing. We just all adopted it. We're just like, ah, you know, whatever, what, is it, what does the Chinese Communist Party want us to do? Let's do that. We'll just do the thing they want us to do. That's perfect. This is incredibly disturbing, obviously. Um, and I just love, like, the she's just completely mystified as to why a girl would be enrolled as a girl. Like, I, it's like as if that's the craziest thing she's ever heard in her life. Well, you think that's crazy? Let me give you another Libs of TikTok classic. I shall explain what Fayfair pronouns are. Fayfair. So Fayfair pronouns are a very common uh, noun cell Super common. set of neo pronouns. Neo pronouns. Neo pronouns are pronouns that aren't he, him, his, uh, she, her, hers, or they, them, theirs. Here's a handy dandy uh, uh, conjugation guide oh, from good. a neo pronouns conjugation guide at Tumblr. Um, and so it's like, Faye is my friend. I saw Fair yesterday. This was Fair request. That book is Fair's. Faye loves Fair self. I've learned nothing. Hopefully that makes sense. No, it does not make sense. You don't make sense. Your world doesn't make sense. This, this world doesn't make sense. And I, maybe I'm not focusing on the right things for these videos, but I don't spend a lot of time on social media, so maybe I don't, I don't, uh, I don't see this stuff uh, all, that, uh, all that much. But Faye Fair pronouns. What, what is this thing? Where they're always explaining this stuff to us. Like, and I don't understand why you need fay, fair, fairs. Him, he, him, hers. Like, he, him, his. If it's him, we know it's his. If it's he, we know it's him. If it's he and him, we know it's his. We don't need you to list every freaking way to say the word. There's no reason to do that. There's no reason for any of this to happen. But yet here we are talking about it every single day. We, ladies and gentlemen, are screwed. Oh, what a world. Let me tell you about Grip6. They've got, they're, they're in the sane part of the world. Where is that? I don't even know anymore. Is there a sane part of the world? Yeah, Grip6 is there. They make great belts. You want a belt? They got a great belt. You want a wallet? They got a great wallet. You want socks? They got great socks. They got great stuff that you're going to really love. Customizable, minimalist, stuff that's going to last a really long time. Stuff that was sourced right here in America. They make it in America. They source it in America because you know what? Grip6 actually likes America. 
I know, it's crazy. They're a small company in Utah. They sell in the United States, but all over the world as well. They're exporting. These are exporters. Yes, we have not just imports, we have exports. And our exports are stuff like Grip6, quality stuff made here in the United States. Grip6.com slash stew. Check it out. See if it's your style. I think it might be. Use the code stew. Save 15%. Grip the number 6.com slash stew. Grip6.com slash stew. Use the code stew and save 15% off today at grip 6 dot com slash stew. I have this weird viewpoint that killing people when they're alive um, should be illegal. I don't think it's a personal choice issue. Uh, They tried to pass this born alive bill yet again, the Republicans, and uh, they got one Democratic vote. Basically, all it says is if a a baby is born uh, as a result of an abortion and survives it, we should probably keep them alive. That's way too far for Democrats. They just can't go down that road. Now we're even seeing incredibly offensive arguments from the left. I want to give you this one. This is from someone named Hillary Shulton. She's apparently a congressperson. I don't know if she's been there for 15 terms or one, because I've never heard of her before in my life. But she's made that sort of impact on me. Actually, after this, you may actually notice quite an impact. Listen to her manipulate the word of God to justify her political point. As a pro-choice Christian Mm. who chose life. Oh, yeah. This issue is so personal to me. My faith informs my actions, but it doesn't dictate the policy of an entire nation. No, it does not. And further, when I read the scripture, I turn to passages and I'm guided by passages like Jeremiah 1 verses 5, which states, I knew you before I formed you and I placed you in your mother's womb. Doesn't say the government's womb or the speaker's womb. Okay, stop. It says the mother's. Please stop. Please stop. The verse quite clearly is talking about how God, it is life, right? Placed you in your mother's womb. When there's a person in the mother's womb, it's, it's a person to the point that God knows who it is. That's what that verse is talking about, quite clearly. And instead, she turns it into this false, sort. she flips it upside down and tries to turn it into this false libertarian stance that the, I, Democrats just are afflicted by whenever abortion's in the room. They are completely communist until the second abortion comes in the room, and all of a sudden, these people turn into libertarians. Uh, look, it's one thing to make BS political arguments. It's another thing to literally flip the word of God on its head to justify your disgusting lust to end the lives of children. There are a long list of really terrible things that politicians have done over the years. This one, right near the top. Get your podcasts going. Review the show. Subscribe to the show. Five stars is the appropriate number of stars. My go-to show. I'm a retired boomer who considers this show one of my two true go-tos. Great work, Stu. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. Please continue to rate and review and watch on YouTube as well. Five stars is the appropriate number of stars for the podcast review. You can drop five stars in the uh, algorithmic engagement comments that you drop here as well, bursting the show into prominence. Uh, Hollywood needs to move out of our country. Yeah, (laughs) no kidding. Would you do a straight-up trade like Hollywood in exchange for like the really tall building in Dubai? I'd make that trade right now. Um, I want to uh, sink my teeth into a miss... Mrs. Practicum's chocolate chip cookie. Yeah, they banned the word fields now and they're replacing it with practicum. I don't even know if that makes any sense. Marianne writes, the reviewers are wrong about a Christmas story. We did this story yesterday. There is a black girl in Ralphie's class. See, they're not all criminals. That's what the alleged review said. And I'm not going to explain this one because I just can't. But Tristam writes, I did not have sex in a car tonight, but I did still love this stupid show. Whether you're having a sex uh, in a car right now or not, we appreciate you tuning in. We will see you tomorrow.